Hi, welcome to the fourth lab concept video for Physical Geography Online. In this video, we will be exploring the tools of modern geography. We will be looking first at remote sensing, then geographic information systems, and finally we'll talk briefly about GNIS, or Global Satellite Navigation Systems. Recall from the Lecture 2 introductory video that geospatial technology is the trifecta of geographic information systems, remote sensing, and global navigation satellite systems, also known as global positioning systems in America. We are going to take a look at how all of these work together. First, let's take a look at remote sensing data. This data is collected from aircraft or satellites that orbit our Earth. The advantage of this is that they are continually collecting data, and because we've had satellites collecting data for over 40 years, we can use satellite data to analyze change over time. We can monitor the Earth's soil moisture, precipitation, and track major events such as wildfires and hurricanes. These satellite images are nice to look at, and we can interpret them qualitatively. However, their real power comes when we convert them into quantifiable data using a geographic information system. Recall from Lecture 2 that a GIS is a computer software program that can display data and analyze it in many different ways. I'm going to show you an example of a GIS of median household income from the San Francisco Bay Area from the 2014 U.S. Census. This data is free and can be downloaded from the U.S. Census website. I'm using the GIS software ArcGIS. I have several map layers here on the left side of the screen. For reference, Foothill College is the yellow star. First, I'm going to turn on the layer that just shows median household income by census tract. The darker green is higher income, the lighter is lower. In a GIS, I can zoom into the data and click on a polygon to find out the specific data associated with it. Here we are at Foothill College. The median household income is $240,000 in this census tract. Needless to say, your humble community college instructor does not live right next to Foothill College. If we head down closer to El Camino, we can click on this lighter colored polygon and see that the median household income here is $51,000. That's a pretty big difference, and the map colors don't really emphasize it. So let's see how we can harness the power of the GIS to emphasize the big difference in data. First, I can simply modify the data display to show, instead of equal intervals of income, standard deviations. This utilizes a histogram of the data to show standard deviations from the mean. Now, two polygons that we just looked at are markedly different to the eye. And when I zoom out, we can really see some patterns in the Bay Area. If I want to take this to the next level, a GIS will allow me to conduct a spatial analysis called a hotspot analysis. This uses spatial statistics to identify statistically significant clusters of high and low values. Here we can really see the clustering of the high and low income areas in the Bay Area. The last piece of geospatial technology is Global Satellite Navigation Systems, or GNIS, commonly called GPS in America. Scientists have a network of GPS receivers around the globe in far-flung places to monitor things like the movement of tectonic plates. In Lab 4, you will look at some of this data using the Jules Verne Voyager. GPS can also be used to predict tsunamis and monitor the shaking in an active earthquake. All of this together can help us to analyze and better understand our amazing world. 